The Canadian banking sector is a vital component of the country's economy, serving as a backbone to its financial system and playing a critical role in facilitating the economic growth of the country. In fact, the financial sector represents the largest portion of the Toronto Stock Exchange, making up over 30% of the TSX 60's weight, which is absolutely massive for one single industry. However, despite its size and influence over the country, this doesn't fully eliminate potential economic risks that could be laying ahead for the industry. Notably, in this case, exposure to commercial real estate loans, which some financial analysts are warning could potentially be problematic for a handful of the big six Canadian banks. So as a shareholder in some Canadian banks myself, such as TD and RBC, well, I wanted to discuss an article I recently read about Canadian banks' exposure to office-focused commercial real estate, which could pose as a potential risk to their earnings over the coming years as work from home becomes more prevalent and the general demand for office space slowly diminishes over time. And hey, if you enjoyed today's video, please take a second to drop a like. It really helps support my content completely for free. Let's get into it. All right, so according to Gabriel Deschain, who's an analyst at National Bank Financial, while Canadian banks may not be as exposed to commercial real estate as their counterparts in the United States, well, this doesn't mean that their earnings aren't potentially still at risk of being overexposed to a facet of real estate that'll undoubtedly be seeing declining income and interest really over the next decade while we see social economic shifts that impact the industry. And this is due to the fact that commercial real estate loans represent the second largest lending exposure of Canada's six largest banks, which are TD, RBC, Scotiabank, CIBC, BMO, and national banks, trailing only residential real estate in proportional size, accounting for approximately 10% of average lending portfolios across these institutions. Now, to put this into perspective, if this isn't clear to you, banks primarily make money through charging interest on loans that they're giving out to individuals and businesses for things such as car loans, residential mortgages, real estate loans, business loans, and so forth. And these banks tend to diversify their portfolio of lending to various industries and types of loans to avoid overexposure to any one type of loan. It's basically like an investment portfolio, but for the bank, this is a diversified exposure to many different types of loans. Well, what's being brought to light here is that on average, across the big six banks, roughly 10% of their total loan portfolios are allocated to mortgage loans for commercial real estate, which is actually relatively large when considering that a bank as large as TD, for example, has roughly $1.9 trillion in assets, which for a bank, assets are mostly loans since they're what generate income for the company. So at a 10% exposure, this would mean that $190 billion of this loan capital is tied up in various forms forms of commercial real estate. RBC or Royal Bank of Canada has the largest allocation to commercial real estate loans among the big six Canadian banks with nearly 20% of its lending portfolio dedicated to this sector. And of these values, office building exposures are particularly worrisome according to this one analyst on a longer timeline and represent 12% of the average big six's commercial real estate book. Overall, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused a significant shift in the way people work with many companies fully adopting remote work where as a result there has been a significant reduction in the demand for office space leading to a decline in the value of office real estate. Just take a look for example at Allied Properties stock and earnings which by the way is a real estate investment trust that focuses almost entirely on office real estate. The shift in demand and conviction for this type of property has left the company's stock fighting to even stay afloat with uncertainty in income and earnings projections. It is quite evident that the economic shift and its rippling effect have caused a significant impact on almost all commercial real estate builders throughout Canada. As a result, most builders have now shifted their focus almost exclusively on the development and investment in residential property, which has a demand that is more than double the supply at the current moment. And this shift in focus is understandable given the current economic climate any resulting market trends. So by focusing on residential property development, builders can somewhat mitigate tenancy and cash flow issues that are more common in commercial real estate. Residential property development 
development is therefore a more viable investment option, providing a more steady income stream and ensuring financial stability for the builders now and for the foreseeable future, and therefore the banks as well that issue out the loans. What's more is that the demand for residential property is expected to continue to rise over the next decade, making it an attractive investment option for builders and lenders in the long run. Overall, this decline in office real estate value and income could very well be a cause for concern as it could lead to an increase in loan defaults, negatively impacting the earnings of Canadian banks. And rising interest rates have also challenged commercial real estate owners and investors, further driving up this issue. Now, even with that said, luckily, most Canadian banks do remain well diversified in their loan portfolios in contrast to many small and local American banks where this reality was highlighted over the past couple of months with Silicon Valley Bank going belly up. In fact, since the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank back in March 2023, commercial real estate loans have garnered significant attention in the United States. And according to research by Goldman Sachs Group, banks with less than $180 billion in assets hold around 70% of commercial real estate loans in the banking system on their balance sheets. Furthermore, US regional banks with between $10 and $20 billion in assets have around 25% of their loans tied up in commercial real estate, which is a massive percentage and will undoubtedly be felt in these banks' earnings over the next decade. So to summarize, this is something Canadian banks will have to continue monitoring and focus on moving away from to remain competitive and stable in the long run. But will this truly impact earnings and the performance of Canadian banks' stocks over the next decade? That's of course yet to be determined. What is certain though is that the residential mortgage loan industry is the largest money maker for Canadian banks and with the demand for residential property expected to continue to rise with heavy immigration levels, this will undoubtedly be an ever-increasing income source that will benefit their bottom line. So despite potential risk to Canadian banks' earnings, Canadian bank stocks have remained extremely solid over the past decade and continue to provide great dividend income to their shareholders, despite some recent turbulence in share value. In fact, Canadian bank stocks are often viewed as being among the safest long-term investments due to the stability of the Canadian banking system and the consistent financial performance of the big six Canadian banks. I actually used to cover this a lot on my channel Channel a couple of years ago, but among other things, many of these banks have a history of increasing their dividends for over a decade, making them an attractive option for income-oriented investors, such as myself, once again holding shares of TD and RBC. And by the way, if you want to learn more about dividend growth investing, I would highly recommend that you check out my course over on Skillshare that covers everything you need to know about how to start picking winning dividend growth stocks. Additionally, are you a Canadian bank? Bank stockholder. If you are, let me know down in the comments and let me know what your thoughts are on what we just spoke about in today's video. Thanks a lot for watching and make sure to drop a like on today's video. It's free and really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.